Today we'll be predicting weld distortion with a multi-physics transient nonlinear coupled thermal structural analysis. We'll begin by creating our simulation files and we're not going to create a solution yet. We'll need to create a condition sequence first. But we'll get to that in just a moment. First we need to discretize the weld. So I'll get an associative copy of it so that we can divide it into some discrete pieces. We'll do that by splitting it up using some datum planes. The length of our weld is an inch and a quarter and we'll split it up into eight pieces. So I'll create seven datum planes. and then we'll go ahead and split it by each of those datum planes. And since we can only select one datum plane at a time, we'll need to do it seven times. All right, now that we've discretized the weld, we'll go to the FEM and we'll create our mesh mating conditions. This will determine where our mesh will be congruent. And we only want it congruent between the weld and each of the bodies that it's connecting. We don't want it to be connected where the two bodies are touching. We'll create a contact condition there later Next, to ensure we have excellent element quality through the fillet, we'll create a 2D mapped mesh quad only on three sided faces that we will not export to the solver. It will only be a seed mesh for a brick mesh that we'll create next. To ensure that seed mesh is used throughout all of the fillets, we'll create an until next swept mesh with the same source element size as we used for our seed shell mesh in order to sweep through all of the fillets. All right, that looks good. Let's go ahead and mesh the rest of the bodies. And we'll put them in the same collector. And next we'll assign a material property. There's only one material in the library that has a stress strain curve and we need to use a stress strain curve for this analysis. So here we'll take a look at the material properties for steel rolled. You can see it has a stress strain curve but what would be better is to have a temperature dependent table of fields of multiple stress strain curves. So we'll go ahead and apply steel rolled so that we have a material with a stress strain curve. Then we'll create our condition sequence. This will define how we create our weld. Since we've discretized the weld into eight pieces, we're going to create eight weld heat parameters. This will define our heat flow rate and we can select whatever units we want and we need to create eight of them. And to more easily select the measure what I'm doing is I'm hitting the tab key to go to the measure and then the H key twice in order to get to the heat flow rate and then the enter key to select OK. Alright, now that we have our eight weld heat parameters, we're going to create some weld conditions. 
our first condition will be condition zero. This is when we have no weld heat applied. So I'll put zeros for all of the values for our weld heat. Our next condition will be when we have heat applied to our first segment of our discretized weld. At this point, we're not really sure exactly what that heat value is going to be, so I'm just going to put in a unit value of 1. And we'll create a scale factor next that will allow us to control the heat for the entire weld. So here we're going to create conditions 1 through 8 where we'll have the weld heat applied to each one of the segments in sequence. All right, now that we've created all of our nine conditions, we'll create our condition sequence. We'll call it weld1, and then we'll define what conditions are happening when. So at time zero, we have condition zero, which is no heat applied to any of the weld locations. Then at time one, one second, we'll have condition one. And we can control the rate at which we create the fillet weld by the time that we select for each one of the conditions. So here I'm just going to have a one second interval between each of the discretized weld segments. All right, then at eight seconds, we'll reach our last segment. And then at nine seconds, we're going to not be welding anymore. So we'll turn off the weld heat and go back to condition zero. Now to allow the part to cool down, and we'll see how the part distorts as it cools, we'll continue at 20 seconds with condition zero. And then we'll double that or so to 50 seconds, also at condition zero, and continue to allow the part to cool. And this will show us the final shape once the part has cooled off. All right, now we've created our condition sequence. To avoid having to create another condition sequence, we can reuse this condition sequence by importing it for our next one. First, we can export it. We can export it as an XML. And then instead of creating a new condition sequence for the next time we want to simulate a weld, we can simply import it. All right, now that we have our condition sequence, we can create our new solution from our condition sequence. We'll be selecting large strains in material nonlinearity. 
And since we'll be creating some contact, I'll ask for contact results. Let's go ahead and preview all of our output results though. We don't need acceleration, SPC forces, or velocity, so we'll go ahead and turn all of those off. All right, so here you can see all of our time steps as we defined from our condition sequence. We'll go ahead and edit all of those subcases, and we'd like to adjust our output flag to be all times instead of the step end time. This will give us more results in between each of those times. Next, we'll create a structural constraint where we'll fix the translations on the edge of the model. Next we'll create a thermal convecting zone. This will help us to cool the part off. Here the part is going to be in air at 68F and 0 PSI and we'll also assign a heat transfer coefficient. Now here I'm just going to select the four largest faces on the part but we could select more if we wanted to. Next I'm going to create a parameter that will allow me to more easily control the heat that I'm using to weld. This will be my weld heat scale factor. I'm going to set it to 0.22 and it's unitless. Next we'll create our thermal loads. This will define our welding. We're going to assign it to each one of the bodies separately. And we'll define the heat load as our weld heat from our condition sequence. So for segment number one, we'll assign weld heat number one with our weld heat scale factor. For segment number two, we'll assign weld heat number two also with our weld heat scale factor. And we'll continue for all of the segments in this fashion. So the first time through you may not know exactly how much heat you need to weld. If after the first time you've gone through you can see that you weren't able to get up to a high enough temperature, you can adjust that scale factor up or down based on your results. Alright, next we'll create some thermal mechanical contact. With one command, we can create surface-to-surface -surface glue or contact, and here we're going to be creating contact, and we'll select the two faces that are in contact. So here we'll select contact, and in case we have initial penetration, we'll put in a min search distance that is a small negative number. And we'll also activate our thermal coupling. So in this way, we can create both structural and thermal contact. We can also let the solver determine what the heat transfer coefficient is based on whether or not 
the contact is open with a gap or closed. All right, so lastly, we'll just check to make sure that our initial stress-free temperature is set correctly. Here I have it set to room temperature. And we're ready to solve. All right, so here in the solution monitor, you can see it's solving for the thermal and structural and it's managing it with the multi-physics interface. With the solution monitor we can also monitor the solution progress from a thermal standpoint in terms of the solid model temperature as well as the structural contact convergence and our solution monitor to see a contour plot of our results. So after 10 minutes we've got our results. Let's go ahead and take a look at them. You can see we have both structural and thermal results. In our thermal results we can also see a copy of our structural displacements and the distortion is going to probably most likely be in the X direction. So we'll look at our X displacement alongside our temperatures. So here we'll set up a side-by-side -side view of our displacements and temperatures. We'll synchronize the views and then we'll adjust our displacement to be 5% of the model so we can see those displacements a little bit better. Since we're predicting about 10 thousandths of distortion. We'll go ahead and select both post views and then animate across all iterations. So here you can see the displacement results on the left and our thermal results on the right. You can see how the part initially is bending back during the welding operation and then as it cools it distorts back into the positive X direction. All right, lastly, we can take a look at our residual stresses due to the welding operation. So here we'll go to our structural results at 400 seconds and look at our stresses. Here we'll look at average stress. This can help you to determine if you need a stress relief operation after welding. SimCenter 3D Multiphysics can simulate your welding processes to help you predict weld distortion.